One of the things that makes PHP so powerful for databases and web applications is its ability to use regular expressions and patterns. You can create strings that match any type of expression or pattern in PHP. These strings are used to search data for particular bits of information according to any specified criteria. These expressions are often used with SQL, that is structured query language, to create, modify, and manage data in databases and data-driven applications. Let's list some examples. Let's begin first by examining the symbols used for basic matches in PHP. To begin, the caret symbol will match the beginning of a string. For example, the expression caret link would match the phrase link obtains the master sort, because link is at the very beginning of the phrase obtains the master sort. Next, the dollar sign will match the end of a string. For example, the expression dollar sign sword would match link obtains the master sword, because in this example, sword is at the very end of the phrase link obtains the master. Finally, if you use the caret and the dollar sign together, you can match an entire string. For example, the expression caret obtains dollar sign would match link obtains the master sword, because obtains is after link and it is before the master sword. You can match on escape characters as well, such as backslash n and backslash. PHP's pattern matching capabilities are further extended with character classes. Character classes are patterns placed within brackets used to match queries against regular expressions. Character classes are an exception to the normal use of the caret, you know, where it would say match the beginning of something. For when the caret is used inside brackets, instead of meaning like, it functions as the logical not, or the opposite. For example, if I were within brackets to put 0-9, that means match any number. Lowercase a-z would mean match any lowercase letter. Uppercase a-z would mean match any uppercase letter. Escape sequences like backslash f t r n would mean match white space. And if I were to use the caret inside square brackets, instead of meaning like, it means not. So caret 0-9 means not any number. To use multiple character classes and expressions, you can combine them with multiple sets of square brackets. In our first example, the caret is outside the square brackets, so it doesn't mean not, it means match the beginning. And then within the square brackets, we have 0-9. So that means that we want to match a string that begins with a number. The next set of square brackets has a lowercase a-z. So in this case, at the end of the expression, we wish it to be lowercase. So if you were to sum it all up together, it means match any string that does begin with a number and has lowercase letters. In the second example, we have two carats. Um, the outside caret means to match the beginning of the expression. But the caret inside the square brackets, remember, that means not, okay? And then the dollar sign, of course, that's the end of the expression. So let's pick it apart and take a look at the whole thing. In this case, the outside caret, the beginning of the expression, we want it to match the first item in the first set of square brackets. So 0-9, the numbers, with the caret in front of it means not a number. So the beginning should not be a number. Now, the next set of square brackets, uppercase A-Z, means capitalized letters at the end of the expression following whatever is at the beginning that is not a number. So if you were to put all of it together, basically we're saying match any string that does not begin with a number and has capital letters. You can match multiple instances of a particular character in a string with curly braces. For example, if I use the caret and I say Z, and then in curly braces I put 1, 3, and then the dollar sign, I'm saying within any string or phrase match at least one Z or three Zs in a row. So if this were the case, then that would match Z because it's just one Z. It would match ZZ because even though it's two Zs, it does have the pattern of at least one Z in it, and ZZZ because that's three Zs. Now, take a look at the second example. We have the caret and Z again, but this time in the curly braces, it's three comma five. So this would match ZZZ because that's three Zs in a row in a particular string, and it would match ZZZZ four Zs, because again, in that string, you still have a pattern of three Zs. And it would match ZZZZZ, because you have five Zs, and of course, that matches the pattern. 
but it would not match a single Z because you'd have to have at least three for a match, nor would it match anything with two Z's in it because once again, you need at least three Z's for a match. To offer even more flexibility, PHP has special pattern characters. The dot operator represents any non-new line character. The question mark means the previous character is optional. The asterisk is the wildcard, so anything with zero or more of the previous character. The addition operator is anything with one or more of the previous character. And the pipe symbol is like the logical or. I guess we need to look at this a bit further. So take a look at the expression above. Above, everything is between the caret and the dollar sign. So in other words, we're looking for an exact pattern match from beginning to end. The first part of the expression, the backslash dash question mark, means look for a minus sign and use the backslash since it means a literal minus sign. The question mark means that the minus sign is optional. Now take a look at the second part of the expression. That's 0 dash 9 in square brackets with 0 comma and a space in curly braces. And this means look for numbers from 0 through 9, basically a digit, and find 0 or more of them. Hence, that's why you have 0 comma and then a space. The third part of the expression means look for a literal period, not the dot operator, since the backslash precedes it. The question mark once again means that that period is optional. The fourth part of the expression, 0 dash 9 in square brackets, means look for numbers, and the 0 comma space in the curly braces means, finds, uh, means to find 0 or more of them. As an alternative, to indicate the same as the previous expression with a wildcard, take a look at this expression colored green. At the beginning is the caret, and at the end is the dollar sign, so we want to create an exact match. Now, if you look at the backslashes, they mean literal. So in the first example, a literal dash, and in the middle, a literal period instead of the dot operator. Um, if you look at the question marks, of course, that means that things are optional. And if you look at the square brackets, we're saying 0-9 to indicate a digit or a number. So all of that is the same as in the previous example, but what is different is we're using the asterisk instead of the curly braces. And in this case, that's the wild card, and it would be equivalent to using zero, comma, and then a space and curly braces, as we did in the previous example. Some other examples, if I were to use the caret and the dollar sign and then between it, I were to put zero dash nine in square brackets, and then in curly braces, one, comma, and a space, that would mean match any string that begins with one or more numbers. And then I could also say that with the addition operator. In this case, the caret at the beginning, the dollar sign at the end, 0 dash 9 in square brackets to specify a digit, and then I could simply use the plus symbol or the addition operator. And that would mean match any string that begins with one or more numbers, same as above. The next example, look, we have the caret at the beginning, the string is at the end, and then we have a dot and the addition operator and the at symbol, dot the addition operator, backslash dot, and then a dot. Well, without the backslash, the dot is basically concatenating or concatenating bits of the expression. But with the backslash and then two dots, that becomes a literal dot. Again, let me rephrase that. This expression here means match any string that begins with one or more non-new line characters, has an asterisk, is then followed by one or more other non-new line characters, then has a literal period dot, uh, and other non-new line characters. Also, let's take a look at using the pipe symbol. Remember, that's like the logical or. So if we had the caret at the beginning and the dollar symbol at the end, and then, say in parentheses, we had capital L, the pipe symbol, capital T, lowercase h, I -N -K, then that simply means match either link or think, okay? So the th would be optional could be L and then INK or TH and INK. There are many functions that work with regular expressions in PHP. These functions can be used to search, modify, and manage quantities of data in a PHP application. Let's take a look at some truly useful built-in functions that are commonly used with regular expressions in PHP programming. The first function we'll look at is eReg. 
It searches for a string pattern and returns true if it finds it. So, a reg returns boolean true or false based on whether or not it finds the string pattern, and as arguments or parameters, it takes the string pattern, the string source, and an array. So, as an example, look at this bit of code here. We have a variable email with a normal email address, cgermany77 at yahoo.com. We have a second variable, good address, and this good address is going to be the result of calling the ereg method or function, and then in its argumentation, we're looking for a pattern of having at least one at symbol and at least one dot operator for the domain. And the variable that we're passing in to match this pattern against is the email. And in this case, it would return true because cgermany77 at yahoo.com does have an at symbol and it does have a dot for the dot com domain. So if you look at the if and else expression and the condition of the if string good address, it will echo looks like a real email address because in this case it will be returned as true. Otherwise, if it were not the case, say I was missing the at symbol or missing the dot, it would say looks like a fake email address. In this example, we're trying to match a pattern and a regular expression. So we have two email addresses here. One is valid and one is completely bogus. We're going to create an expression, a regular expression here. And we're using the caret because we want to match it. And basically we're saying it should have at least one or more at symbols, which email one has, but email two does not have. And in addition, it should have one or more dots in it, which email one has and email two does not have. And then something should follow the dot, the domain name. So a valid email address would need to match this expression. And email one would match that expression, but email two will fail. Well, ereg will return a Boolean true or false based on whether or not the expression has been matched. So in email one's case, it is a good address. Ereg will return true. If true, it'll say looks like a real email address. If it didn't return true, it would say it looks like a fake email address. But we know it is valid, so it will return true. In the second example, we call a reg again, but this time we pass an email too. And it will fail because it doesn't have an at symbol, it doesn't have a dot, and there's no domain name following the dot in it. So when we call a reg this time, it returns false instead of true, and it will say it looks like a fake email address. So again, let's see how that looks when we run it through the PHP interpreter. And notice using a reg to search for regular expression, testing email address one looks like a real email address. Address two looks like a fake email address. You can use the optional third argument to break up parts of a string designated by parentheses and store each substring as elements of an array. Note that the period is also used to concatenate. Note how parentheses are used when creating the regular expression to match against. This example is similar to the previous example, but the code is different because we're using the additional argument, an array. And we can take this array and each element would give us different parts of the expression. So first element zero is sort of a pointer to the entire array itself. So that would be the full address. Then elements one, two, and three could then give us the user, the domain, and the top level domain if it existed. According to the expression, we were matching it against and of course, if the Boolean returned false, then we would simply say looks like a fake email address. The ereg method can also accept a third optional argument or a parameter, an array. And when performing a comparison to a regular expression, every time it finds a match to the pattern, it can store it as a separate element in the array. So in this example, we have a variable, email, and the value is hatsunimiku at bestfriendforever.com. Our pattern is we're looking for the at symbol and the dot operator for the top level domain. So if those are positive and we find matches, then each part of this address will be stored as a separate element in the array. Now, index zero is special. It's a pointer to the entire array in the method. However, one, two, and three would then be the substring values of Hatsune Miku, best friend forever, and the top level domain of dot com. So, if we find a match to this pattern, then the if block would execute, and we would be able to see split up as separate elements in an array the different parts of the email address. And if we don't, it'll say it looks like a fake email address. 
So why don't we run the script to the PHP interpreter and see what happens. And let me just run my script here to copy everything. A little batch file to copy everything over to the folder where my web server is set up and we'll run the script. And once it passes through the PHP interpreter, the full address is Hatsune Miku at bestfriendforever.com and then user Hatsune Miku domain bestfriendforever and top level domain com. So you can see how that works. Now on the other hand, what if we change the address to something that was not valid? Let's say that it was just um, Hatsune Miku. Okay, if we did that, we'll save it. Let me run my batch file here to copy everything over to my web server directory. And then we'll run it through the PHP interpreter. So we'll load that up in the browser there from the web server. And now if you look at it, it says it looks like a fake email address because the pattern wasn't matched. It didn't find the at symbol or the dot operator. The reg i functions in a similar fashion as the reg, but it is not case sensitive. And the reg underscore replace replaces one string pattern with another. Let's take a look at the syntax for e reg replace. In this case, the first argument is the string or pattern to match. The second argument is the replacement string. And the third argument is the source string. So if you look at the following bit of code, we have a variable happy ending. And it says Zelda and Link embrace and live happily ever after. Then we have a second variable called Midna's ending. We're going to call the method eReg replace. We're going to pass in Zelda as the pattern to match, Midna as the pattern to replace Zelda with, and the variable will be happy ending. So when we call eReg replace, the function, it's going to go look at that string happy ending. It's going to find the Zelda and it's going to replace it with Midna. And then it will return the result and store it in the variable Midna's ending. So when we call the function echo and display the contents of the string variable Midna's ending, it will say Midna and Link embrace and live happily ever after. In this example, we're calling the eReg replace method. And in so doing, we're going to replace one string with another. So we have a normal string here, Zelda and Link embrace and live happily ever after. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this variable, we're going to pass it in as an argument to the eReg replace method, and we're going to assign the return value back again to the variable itself. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go look for Zelda. This is the string we're searching for. First argument, second argument, the string we want to replace it with. And then the third argument is the variable. And so when we do this, we're just going to display it. And let's go ahead and run it. So remember, happy ending first was Zelda and Link Embrace. Now it should say Midna and Link Embrace. And in this case, Midna and Link Embrace and live happily ever after. In addition to matching and replacing entire strings, you can locate and replace substrings. Substrings are stored in a buffer with nine elements and are referenced via backslash backslash one, backslash backslash two, backslash backslash three, and so on. For example, Look at the following bit of code. We have our two variables, and once again, we're calling eReg replace. But this time, the very first parameter is Zelda, but in parentheses is ELD, so that part would be ignored. And what to replace it with? Well, after the Z, we have backslash backslash one in our second parameter, and then a capital A. So what that will do is it will find the lowercase a and replace it with a capital A. So above Zelda with the lowercase, would be replaced with Zelda with an uppercase A. There's also eReg I replace, which is the same as eReg replace, but not case sensitive. In this example, we're going to use a reg replace, and when we call it, we're going to replace substrings. And we can do this with a double backslash. So take a look at our variable, happy ending. Same value as the previous example, Zelda and Link embrace and live happily ever after. Well, this time we're going to call eReg replace and we're going to use backslash, backslash, one, and then i. And so what's going to happen is, what's in parentheses here, the ELD will be ignored. But in this case, after the capital Z, the A will be replaced with the capital I. And so if we were to run it through the PHP interpreter, and then let's scroll down a bit. So it says, Zelda and link, embrace, and live happily ever after, instead of Zelda. Another useful method is the split function. 
which searches a string for a pattern and breaks the string into array elements based on that pattern. So the syntax for calling split would be, well, first it returns an array, and then for parameters it would take the pattern to match, the second parameter would be the source, and an optional third parameter would be a limit. So if you look at the following bit of code, we have our variable happy ending once again, and this time we have an array, word array, and we're going to call the split method, which will return an array when it's done. The first argument is, in this case in double quotes, a space. So the pattern we want to match is a space. The second argument is our string source, which is happy ending. So therefore, everywhere there is a space in the string happy ending, that's going to become a separate element in the array that gets returned from the split method. So if you look at the contents of happy ending, Zelda space and space link space embrace, each one of those words now becomes a separate element. And so if we were to take the array word array and put it inside of the echo function and then display the elements as indexed zero through eight, it would simply add, uh, in this case, a line, an HTML line break for every single word. So you would see Zelda, a line, and a line, link, a line, and so forth. In this example, we're invoking the split method, and it will break a string into substrings based on a pattern. Again, notice we have the same string here, Zelda and Link embrace and live happily ever after. But we're creating an array, and we're using the split method, and we pass in our string. Well, this is what we're going to split on, the delimiter character, so in this case, a space, and this is the variable. So in other words, everywhere there's a space and happy ending, it's going to be a separate element in the array. And so once we do that and we store it inside of word array, we can then display it, in this case with multiple lines in HTML, just by using the subscript values. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for each word. And let's see how that looks as we run it through the PHP interpreter. And again, you can see that every word now is on a separate line after an HTML line break. And I'll show you the HTML source which was generated, you know, in this case, by the PHP script.